fundraisers need to know about everyday donors of color. Hi, I'm Bill Stanjakevich. This is the first day from the fundraising school, and I'm joined once again by my colleague, Dr. Una Osley. Una is the Associate Dean at the Indiana University Lilly Family School Philanthropy, where she oversees our research team, as well as our international work across the world. And Una, so great to have you with us. And there's a new study that your team has put together about everyday donors of color. What do fundraisers need to know? First, thanks, Bill, for having me. And uh, this is really a pivotal moment, as all of us know, for philanthropy and for our country and the world. Um, over the past year, we've had a global pandemic. We've had a global racial and social justice movement. And this study was really conducted to understand how donors of color are responding to these crises, multiple crises in communities, how their giving is uh, changing in the wake of the uh, current and, and cr crisis that's still unfolding in many communities across the country, and what the nonprofit sector and especially fundraisers need to know. So I will try to summarize very quickly. It's an in-depth study we had First, a national survey that was fielded in partnership with the National Opinion Research Center at the University of Chicago North. We also conducted focus groups with over 60 donors of color from all different backgrounds, uh, African-American, Native American, Asian American, um, Hispanic uh, or Latinx donors, and um, as well as a range of other uh, groups that really showcase the increasing diversity of our nation. And I think the number one finding from this uh, report, uh, there are lots of takeaways. Number one is that generosity spans race and ethnicity. We find generosity in every community across this country, all different backgrounds. And that's important for fundraisers to understand that uh, generosity is not specific to any racial or ethnic group. It really does span boundaries. We also found that donors of color are engaged in multiple ways in uh, providing impact in their communities. This includes giving money uh, to nonprofits, but also includes donating goods, helping family members, friends, neighbors, strangers, and we actually see higher rates statistically of these uh, multiple forms of generosity, especially donating goods, helping strangers. Uh, and so this really fits in with what we know about American philanthropy, which is that it is diverse, it is complex, and for fundraisers to understand that uh, this is a very dynamic uh, environment where understanding all the different ways that donors of color are participating and how they can partner and build collaborations, uh, sustainable collaborations with communities will help drive impact. You know, what else did the study find in terms of these donors and causes associated directly with racial and social justice? Thank you, Bill. Over the past year, one of the uh, inflection points we've seen is a and a, a national awakening on race, a national reckoning on race. And we've seen an increase in the percentage of Americans who are giving to racial and social justice. So in particular for the national study uh, in 2019, it was about 12% of Americans. It's up to nearly 16%, but African-Americans and uh, Asian American donors actually statistically more likely to support racial and social justice causes. We also saw that younger Americans are more likely to give to racial and social justice, racial equity causes, and educated, more educated and more higher income donors are more likely to support these causes. For uh, African American and Asian Americans in particular, the past year has led to much more awareness around uh, issues of racial inequality, and particularly for African Americans, uh, the killing of George Floyd, many of these issues have raised awareness. And we've seen um, African American donors and also uh, communities really uh, leaning into these causes and with Asian American donors as well. So this is something that fundraisers uh, certainly should uh, be aware of the shifts that are taking place with donors of all different backgrounds showing more interest in uh, giving to racial equity and uh, understanding that uh, 
Racial equity spans, again, multiple cause areas. Uh, it can be in education, it can be in healthcare, the environment, the arts, and that donors of all different backgrounds are asking these questions, but donors of color in particular have been on the front lines, not just in the past year, but even longer in advocating around these causes, in volunteering, in organizing. And that's another opportunity for fundraisers and nonprofits for them to raise their strategic awareness around these issues, but also think about building collaborations and partnerships. Una, that is such a fascinating finding because so often when we hear about racial and social justice and reconciliation and those movements, uh, it can be easy to think about civil demonstrations and demonstrations that are aimed at changing public policies and changing laws. And yet this study is finding while those things are happening, there also are groups of people who are using their philanthropy in these directions also in those broader ways, looking at health and education, environment, other aspects like that that are being defined very broadly as social justice. Absolutely. And the, the big takeaway, especially from the interviews with donors of color, is understanding that uh, all of your assets can be utilized to advance racial equity. And your giving is part of uh, your toolbox and certainly thinking about the organizations you support. And the message there for fundraisers is as they work with donors of color, uh, making sure they understand uh, racial equity as a cause area and how they can once again engage those those donors partner with those donors and ultimately work um, in collaboration with communities. In many ways to understand racial equity as we do our important work in the philanthropic sector, which this study is helping us to understand. Una, the last time you were with us on a podcast, you revealed the findings of the crowdfunding study and gave us a peek into digital fundraising and the use of technology. And are there some findings from this study as well that help continue our understanding in that regard? Absolutely. And that was one question we sought to answer, which is how are donors of color utilizing these new tools? Do we see uh, higher rates of participation? Uh, what are the differences there? And here, uh, it's really quite interesting. We do find that uh, communities of color are using these new forms of giving, giving via social media, giving via crowdfunding, and uh, especially younger uh, donors of color are participating using uh, a, a range of tools that are based in technology. So the message there for nonprofits, especially those that are looking for ways of bringing in younger and more diverse donors and volunteers, social media can be a powerful way to connect with that audience, but also um, digital fundraising and um, all, all the new tools that we now have available, including crowdfunding. Uh, many organizations during the past year have seen that uh, these uh, movements have brought opportunities for them. And I think the big message here for many uh, of, of the nonprofit fundraisers and others in the nonprofit world is to recognize that in this moment of crisis, there's also an opportunity to engage with donors in a way that you may not have been able to in the past. And along those lines, Una, what are you learning and your team learning from your research that fundraisers can apply uh, in terms of these philanthropic activities from, from these communities, certainly people can act individually, but we also talk about the philanthropic sector being, you know, uh, predominant with voluntary associations. Are we seeing networks of people coming together amongst donors of color? Yes, that's a very good point. We saw this specifically in the focus groups, that donors of color are participating, not just in giving as individuals, but giving through affinity groups, giving through uh, their organizations, but also more informally through grassroots organizations, giving circles and organizations that uh, may not be on the radar as of many uh, fundraisers. And so one message here is as donors of color are essentially uh, moving into not just giving individually, but also collectively, there's an opportunity for, for the nonprofits and fundraisers to partner with these giving collectives. Those can be sources of information, they can be sources of um, volunteers, but they can also be a ways of building engagement around fundraising opportunities, events, and a, a host of other opportunities. In every uh, group that we talked with during the focus 
focus groups, there were a lot of activities that were already taking place around COVID response, around racial equity, and uh, partnerships that were being developed sometimes with community foundations and sometimes with larger funding collaboratives. So uh, one of the messages out of this work is that uh, organizations who want to build uh, those kinds of linkages with communities of color will find that this is a really great time to do that. And I should mention, lots of community foundations now have um, guides uh, with uh, lists of different giving circles and collaborations in specific communities, whether it's Denver, Indianapolis, um, California, uh, Silicon Valley, uh, their community foundations have actually published these guides and uh, many donors of color are helping bridge uh, communities. So I certainly think this is uh, not just uh, an opportune time, but certainly a moment where uh, there is uh, interest in this topic and there are also new opportunities developing. Dr. Una Osley provides senior leadership to the Mays Family Institute on Diverse Philanthropy, which resides in the Indiana University Lilly Family School of Philanthropy. She's also one of the top 50 leaders in the nonprofit sector, um, uh, according to the Nonprofit Times. And Una, it's because of your wonderful gift to translate research uh, for practitioners is one of the reasons that you're so highly regarded. And I'd like to ask you as we conclude here to, to kind of summarize a little bit, just in the last couple of years, you've led a study on the importance of diversity on our boards of directors. Uh, there's been a study regarding crowdfunding and how we know donors of color are, are you know, disproportionately more active with crowdfunding than perhaps others. And then there's this study here about everyday donors of color. And at the fundraising school, we receive the question all the time, people who earnestly, want to diversify their donor databases. As you think about you know, this growing body of research that you're leading, what advice do you have for fundraisers? So, you know, kind of a, a takeaway, I know it's a very complex topic, but how can folks diversify their donor databases as you're looking at these findings from these various studies? Thank you, Bill. There are three things I would say. Number one, strategic awareness, education, and learning. So fundraisers need to really do some deep learning about their own communities, about the communities of color that they want to reach so that they understand those donors and their motivations and their practices. I think the second one, in addition to the learning and the um, listening and education is also collaboration, building new types of partnerships. We talked about partnering with grassroots organizations, with established uh, organizations, fraternities, sororities, neighborhood associations, uh, that's going to be key. And then I think the third piece is um, ultimately engagement. Uh, in addition to building these collaborations, engaging with these communities, you'll often find that when uh, fundraisers and nonprofits build those modes of engagement, the results follow in terms of sustained fundraising, sustained gifts at all different levels. What we've also learned from everyday donors of color, and this is very important for fundraisers, is that communities of color are very generous with their time, with their talents, with their testimony, and also with their networks, their ties. And so for, for nonprofits, for uh, many in the fundraising community, really learning about these communities will yield uh, dividends, not just in, in the short term, but ultimately in the long term by plugging into these networks. And uh, the good news here is that we have um, now the, the data to support that. And the research that you're leading is teaching the rest of us so well. Uh, diversity is incorporated into all of our courses at the fundraising school. And one of the strongest distinctives of the fundraising school is that wherever possible, our curriculum is research-based, and Dr. Una Osley and her team are the key reason why. Uh, again, Una serves as Associate Dean at the Indiana University Lilly Family School of Philanthropy. As for the fundraising school, our public courses are available in person, and we're gradually growing to more and more cities uh, over time. But we're going to remain uh, having a robust presence online, both with asynchronous, meaning recorded courses, and synchronous, meaning virtual live courses as well. Uh, our custom training can come straight to you. And yes, we're willing to train in person if you're willing to have us and all the local, state, and federal health requirements and international health regulations uh, would allow us to do so. All this information is available on our website at philanthropy.iupui.edu forward slash the fundraising school. Our producers today are Jennifer Boffman and Mike Anthony with my colleague, Dr. Una Osley. I'm Bill Stanjakevich, and now you are now more fully informed on this first day from the fundraising school. Mm -hmm.